The Eagles and the Tigers at Football Park, a crucial match. The Eagles, a big victory over North Adelaide last week. The Tigers went down to Port Adelaide. Foot at the ball. The umpire has played it holding the ball. He couldn't get rid of it. It's a good tackle by Grenville. He's going to go to the outer side of the ground. Copping's on a lead. May have been interfered with. He was, according to the umpire. Stephen Copping, in the first minute of this game, in fact, the first half minute, is going to have a shot at goal from 45, 50 metres out. Sustained a... May have been a court fire, a bit of a hamstring injury last week. Carry on a lead. Wants to lead the big fella, but McIndoe's going to try and run it clear. But it's Marshall who swoops on it. Back towards full forward. Garton couldn't mark it. The Eagles are going to clear it. Here's to be Smith, who runs it to the boundary line, just in front of the grandstand here. So we'll see a throw in right half forward flank for the uh, Tigers. Look at Earl showing a bit of confidence in the big full forward. Peter Carey on the lead. Maybe Stephen Coppinghead has got a bad leg. He certainly didn't let it go on that occasion. Big Adam Garten in there, but John Cunningham looks a little bit bigger this season too. Stephen Barrett in. He's caught. He's going to get a free kick for a high tackle. He's at half back. Much improved player, Stephen Barrett. Kick just past centre. David Kernahan dropping back. He can't take it. Max Cruz had a good game in the Escort Cup. Kernahan recovers. Ron Taylor with an opportunity, but Seabohm's there. Now Glenelg coming out of defence. Nearly. Torrance, certainly very competitive, Peter. They certainly are. Down, he got that handball out, Robert. Grenvold was there, though, and uh, in goes Big Henwood. The kick back sees it go over the top of Cunningham. He's a powerful man. Well, the umpire is free kicked Marshall for holding on to him. Marshall's not too happy about it. Uh, the umpire was right on the spot there, though. He could probably see what we couldn't. Lindsay and Alan Stringer just clashed, and uh, it cost Glenelg 15 metres, which Marshall wouldn't be too happy about, nor the coach. Cunningham will go long. Big pack of players down there. Duthie up very high, completely missed the ball. Henwood's drag. The umpire about to blow the whistle. Ross Gibb races away from the back line, goes short towards Marshall. He's at half back. Took it too long to get rid of it. Paisy kicks the ball forward. A chance for Roberts. He comes in late. It goes straight over the top of him and through for the first score of this game. No, it ran out of bounds, in fact. So it'll be uh, in the right forward pocket there. Northern end of the ground for the Eagles. Roberts will take the ruck work down there, as uh, might be expected. The Eagles have only got one ruckman. Seabone. The kick was just touched before it hit the boot. Wayne Stringer pushes it away. A chance now for the Eagles. The kick coming back, but only the point. The crowd went up. They thought it might have been a mark, but it wasn't. So the first score on the board. Torrens a point. Glenelg gets a score. Yes, a good snap there by Paul Weston. Got his hands on that ball. Ross Gibbs to bring it in for Glenelg. Kicking to the outer side. Oh, just the simplest of marks to Wayne Hedl. Just stood there, held his ground. Just had a drop onto his bread basket. Lovely kick too, down to centre wing, out wide. Garten giving the lead. He's taken the mark. Has a look to play on. Takes his time about it, but finally does. It's a high kick in towards Robin Kidney's at the back of the pack. He flew, perhaps he shouldn't have. In right trying for times. Lindsay's having a very good season too. Tom Hank. A lot of fighting going on. David Kernham with a wild handball. John Economu, back pocket player for West Torrens, knocking it out of bounds. Torrens one point. Goodell get to score. Torrens perhaps with the aid of a slight breeze. is carrying the ball some 10 or 15 metres, I would say, in kick. Carey setting himself with Cunningham. No one getting the knock. Wild pass for Enright with his body over it. Carey comes out with a wild one there. That was McIndoe. At the centre half back, Grenvold over the top to Kernan. He's got player coming out from behind, goes wide, and David Foote takes the mark at half back. Playing both ends of the ground, David Foote. He's a good player now. In right, quick handball away to Stephen Barrett. Barrett comes back onto that left boot. He'll have to come, he'll have to do something quickly. Weston, way out in front of Seabone. The running player is Page. Page looks for the lead of Roberts. Straight over that player's head. Pillmore, Gibbs. Gibbs tapped it back to uh, Duthie. Gibbs got it back again. Now Duthie gets it back. Runs through centre half back and goes long. Puts under that ball. Can't mark it against David Kernahan. Barrett again working very hard for the Eagles. Gets his third kick forward. Getting under the ball again is Ross Gibbs. He certainly knows where the ball is. Marshall way on his own. 
Sims has to come back on Maynard. Marshall will go to the outer side of the ground. Beautifully disposed. A good leap out there by Alan Stringer. He's down from his half-forward flank, Alan Stringer. He'll further it, looking for Kidney, finding that player. Kidney now, who started off in the pocket. The high ball, Maynard's under it. Sims comes in late. Big, powerful man, Cunningham. Gee, he went straight through Sims then, unintentionally. The umpire's found a free kick, pushing the back. Maynard. Peter Maynard, from half-forward. Glenelgan to attack, into a slight breeze. Very direct kick, certainly not being held up by the wind hardly at all. Carey can't take the ball, it's just knocked away. Now an opportunity for West Torrens to clear. They come out, into the, out towards the wing position. Grenville tries very hard, Hank came in late, he couldn't get it. Gavin Walsh now with an opportunity for Glenel. There's one arm held, then finally gives it away to Stringer. Not a good handball. He slips, then throws it one hand, up by still calls play on as Walsh knocks it towards the boundary line and out of bounds. So the scoring not very high at the moment. Torrens one point. Glenelg yet to put a score on the board. Between forward pocket and half forward for Glenelg. Carey and Garten are both there. Garten playing at centre half forward today. He's the one who's going to go for the knock. Just taps it forward. Kidney takes possession, but he's caught with it. And has been a judge to be holding the ball. Umpire probably suggesting that he tried to barge through that pack and knowing Robin Kidney he does do that at times David foot to John Cunningham he's dropped the easiest of marks he covers well though on that left boot Kilmore's in front made good position couldn't mark the ball Jim backed up well though great tackle on uh, Big Henwood holding the ball Henwood sometimes gives you the impression that he's having a bit of a rest out there but I think that's just the way he looks rather than the way he plays a push in the back against Roberts Against Duthie, the umpire explaining in very clear terms to Chris Duthie what it's all about. So the Eagles a chance now to bring up the first goal of the day. We played seven minutes too, so uh, there hasn't been a lot of free-running football here. When they all played on Tuesday night, beaten by South in the Escort Cup final. John Roberts lines it up. He's dead centre with that one. So first goal to West Torrens. 1-1, leading the Bays yet to score. Well, John Roberts putting himself in front. He's a big man, John Roberts. Chris Duthie, who's no shorty, was unable to get over the top of him, and he's interfered from behind. West Torrance taking advantage of that opportunity to get it in it after a very good tackle on Wayne Henwood, and John Roberts taking advantage of that free kick and kicking truly. So West Torrance 1-1, 7, Glenelg get to score. The Eagles going with the breeze. They're going to the northern end. Henwood on the ball now, straight down to Sims. Through comes Colsey. Did that pretty well. Laura Wilson appeared to drop the ball. Pays picked it up, picks it up to half forward. Here's the man with all the speed, Ronnie Taylor. Salisbury's right with him though, and he takes it over the line. Scott Salisbury had a good week. Been included in the state squad. He certainly worked on his football. One of the toughest players in the town at the moment. Weston taking the ruck work there. Kidney. It's a lively rover. So is McDermott. Sims trying to put him out of the park. And Pilmore will get a free kick for a high one. Gee, Sims certainly attacked uh, the ball pretty hard then. I think it was the ball. Pilmore will get around McDermott. Wobbly old kick up forward. It's gone over the top. Henwood made the mistake. Cruz also. Through goes Barrett. Can't pick the ball up finally, or he let it go. Plenty of players around there, and there'll be a bounce down, right in the forward pocket. Gee, Stephen Barrett showing a lot of pace then in recovery to get that ball. Unable to get it to his foot. Paul Weston working hard too. Up in that centre-half forward area, it's Weston flying for the knock. West Torrance a little bit short of height. The Nurg with a couple of big fellows in Carey and Garten, both playing in the key forward spots, and they've got Wayne Henwood in the ruck today. So they've got a bit of height around the ground, something which West Torrens haven't got a lot of. Maybe West Torrens mobility will be the secret. Ron Taylor looking for a holding the ball decision. Grenvold's in there. The umpire's going to bounce the ball. Just a little bit of stalemate at the moment in the forward pocket for West Torrens. They're one goal one to Glenelg, no score. Wayne Henwood in front position, just bangs it out of bounds. 
and so they'll have to start again on a boundary throw-in on this occasion. This first quarter pretty important for the uh, for the Eagles, Robert, because with Glenelg playing on Tuesday night, the Eagles with the breeze, they'd, they'd want to make good use of it. They certainly would. They must be feeling the pinch a little bit, the, the bays. Henwood's caught with the ball. He's going to be penalised on this occasion. Very unlucky, I thought. Ball hurled to him. He did try to take it and barge away with it. And I suppose that's the intention of the rule. If you take it and try to break with the ball, then if you're caught, holding the ball will be punished. So Wayne Henwood, not too happy about all of that. No more with the rest of Glenelg, particularly now that Paul Weston's got it. He's usually a lovely kick. It's his second. First one was a minor score. Well, that's a magnificent kick. You don't see any better than that. West Tollens, two goals, one. Glenelg, no score. Well, that's an interesting free kick to have a look at. Uh, Wayne Henwood worked to get possession of the ball. Now, you saw the upward movement of the fist there. I'm just wondering whether the umpire was or formed the view that he wasn't really trying to punch it away. I'm not sure. He, uh, he was disappointed about it, but what a man to give it to. He's one of the best kicks I've ever seen, Paul Weston. Back to the centre. Henwood and Cunningham. Oh, Cunningham high there. Tries to get it to Downey. He can't, though. Pillmore with a quick kick away, but the free kick going to Grinnell. Peter Maynard, it is, in the centre of the ground. Tends to get a few kick, free kicks, Peter Maynard. Probably gets to the fall of the ball. It's his second kick for the day. And his second free. High in the air. Spoiled away by West Torrens into a pack. Centre half forward, the umpire have another bounce down. That's centre half forward for Grinnell. They desperately need a goal. There's a lot of players around the ball here. Garton this time. Up he goes, just lays it back, but Lindsay intercepts. Maynard going for it, and Barrett for West Torrens. He's been in everything early. Now Downey goes out wide. The West Torrens are running. Tom Hank from centre wing, high over half forward. David Foot in front, and he's taken the mark wide in the pocket. West Torrens looking very good early. High to the goal square, John Roberts. Duthie from behind this time. Gives himself a run at the ball and just fists it through for the minor score. So Torrens, two goals, two, 14, leading Glenelg, no score. Yeah, that was a well-judged spoil by Duthie too. He's, uh, well, Robert made the point earlier that uh, Roberts is a very big man. He is. Duthie very concerned about that, but he judged that run to perfection. The outer side of the ground, it's Hemwood, Hemwood again. That's the second mark he's taken in that uh, position. And this is his third kick. He's a little, he might be a little bit worried about getting the ball today, Henwood. Every time he's got it today, he's been free kicked. But he's not a bad player. What about that grand final performance last year? He was uh, a very important player for the Bays. He beat Cunningham on that occasion. Marshall's kick uh, semi-smothered. It comes out to Pillmore. He goes every way, which way. A quick kick forward. Seabone. Cruz. Henwood again lost it to Weston. Here's a chance now, Downey. Tim Dillon said he looked a bit like Elephant Man last week after the game. His lip was all over his face. Now Kidney pays superb skills. Sims, here's a chance. Cunningham will go into the left boot. No, he gives it to Downey. There's plenty of runners. Bruce Lindsay from halfback lines it up and misses. Oh, that was a bit like a, a rugby run, that one. 2-3, Torrens, Glenelg get to score. You know, it was a great move. The cover the handle was just a little bit loose, but the last one to Lindsay, what a beauty. Gave him the opportunity to kick the goal. He steadied himself very quickly. He was at great pace running into the defence. Got it to his boot, but obviously running just a fraction offline. Would have been a very exciting goal for Torrens. Duthie to the outer side, finds Seabone. Been a very good player for Glenelg over several seasons, both in league and reserves. Certainly made his mark as a league footballer when he got the opportunity. Kidney now off hands. He goes around the body. Quick handball by Stringer. Over to Marshall. They're into half forward. Garten's in front. It's brought away from him by Wilson. Wilson coming through again to recover. Well done. He kicks back to half forward. So Torrens going back into rebound. Another good take here by Barrett as he comes through. Punches it into Roberts. And they're looking very, very good at the moment. Beautiful movement by the West Torrens side forward. Uh, after a lovely recovery at half back by Dale Wilson. Might be Mark Downey kicked that pass, actually, Peter. Lovely kick by Roberts. The height gave the wind a chance to work, but accuracy no good, so it's a wasted opportunity for West Torrens. They're two goals, 4 16. Glenelg, no score. Well, they'll need to do a bit more, the Eagles, in terms of scoring. 
Seabone got it from Gibbs then. Big Peter Carey's out there. There appeared to be a trip on unintentionally, and Peter Carey will take the free kick. Big Super goes to centre wing. The man in front is McDermott. Close to a mark, but he didn't quite have enough of it. And Hamble went wide to centre wing. The umpire has indicated a free kick. It'll go to Bruce Lindsay. Interference when he didn't have the ball. He's going to hook it into centre half forward. Paul Weston. I think Paul Weston likes those kicks come in like that. I think most forwards, if they're quick and get into the open, like them. Put off hands, but again, offline. They're very sharp off hands in the forward line, the Eagles, but they're not converting. 2 5, Cornell get to score. Paul Weston giving the big fellow John Roberts an opportunity to run at that ball then. It was a lovely kick in the air, and it means it's going to make it hard for the defence. He gives the opportunity for a fellow with the marking ability of Roberts to get at it like that. Now Sims comes straight in towards centre half forward. Players sending themselves under the ball. Grenbold as he can't take it. It's Dukey backing up from behind as he comes down centre wing. He's kicked travelling some 40 metres to half forward. Spoiled away by Maynard. And the ball just runs out of bounds right in front of the Cornell coach's box, the reserve bench. This big match here today on Seven Sport. Torrens 2 5. Cornell get to score. Torrens off to a good start. Garten. Marshall trying for the ball. He's going to get a free kick for a push in the back. So David Marshall to take the kick. And he hops up. Looking a bit aggressive today, David Marshall. I thought he was getting back into a bit of form the other night, Pete, with his touch. Yes, he's close, uh, I think, uh, Robert. Putting his eyes up to shield from the sun was guard. It came off hands to Henwood. Quick snap away. I tell you what, it was well done. He didn't have much time to think about all that. It really had to be instinctive, reflex, and uh, there, was, there was only one kick that would score the goal, and he couldn't quite manage it. Kick in, goes to Colsey. Taken probably by Kidney. He's got a lot of power, this little fellow. Goes to the left foot. Just sprays it. It's gone out of bounds on the foot. So West Orange will take a free kick from the back pocket. Peter McIndoe it is. He'll take that kick. Can't recognise him this year. Number 11. Doesn't seem to be the right number from last year. Hello. It's going to be a change here. Was that Peter? An advantage free up ground? I... I'm not sure what's happened. Was he flattened after he kicked it? I didn't pick it up at all, Robert. Cannot work that one out. Um, I don't think Graham Cross can either. He's uh, having a bit of a shake of the head. The topping kick, though, is going to uh, go straight to the other side, out on the full. So, uh, just wondering whether the kidney kick may have ricocheted off another Glenelg player's boot. Off a Torrens player's boot, I mean. McIndoe, in right. Not McIndoe, in fact, uh, Cunningham. Then rights at centre half back, 15 metres as well. He will go to the outer side half forward flank. In comes Foot against Carey. Marshall couldn't pick it up. Pillmore at the bottom of the pack. Marshall again, and we'll see a bounce. In the uh, corner of the square there in Torrance forward area. 2 5 to a point on Seven's big league. Sims. Fillmore, foot, off hands again, Downey, nearly foot, beautifully, onto the left boot, the kick not a good one, Goofy manages to uh, kick it away, plenty of pace, Grenville, Salisbury, got out of trouble very well, Salisbury, the running player, Doofy, now Wayne Stringer, the kick smothered, Sims, left foot, Roberts, good mark, Good mark, Roberts. Didn't flinch one inch. John Roberts kept his eyes on it. The Eagle supporters wanted a free after disposal, but it wasn't perhaps quite there. So John Roberts gets his third set shot at goal. Paul Weston put one through from a slightly sharper angle about five minutes ago. John Roberts is going to kick. Two goals, John Roberts. The Eagles 3-5 from Earl Blunt Point. The remainder of this quarter very important for both clubs. Cunningham and Carey in the middle. Carey dribbled a ball out towards Kernahan. Smith out there for the Eagles. And also Pays. Pays will get a free kick for a legging. He's a fine player. Highly skilled. Loves to kick the ball long. That's his fourth kick. Weston comes in late. He's taken the mark. 
Got known for his overhead marking, Paul Weston, but he managed that pretty well. Taking three today. And uh, it's no secret that he can kick a long way. And I would think he'd have it in his mind that he will make the distance. I'd bet on it. I'd say there's no doubt about the distance here. Plenty of doubt about the distance. Marked right on the line by Scott Gibbs. Uh, not Scott Gibbs, Ross Gibbs. That's a combination of Gibbs and Salisbury in the back pocket. A lot of people have loved that, I can tell you. Gibbs to the outer side. High in the air. Marshall getting a run. He usually likes to have a fly. Two the little players, though. Marshall kicks it on quickly. And Lindsay on that half-back line on Alan Stringer. What a wonderful season he's having. In fact, he's had a couple of good seasons since coming back from that knee injury. Absolute credit to him. He's kicked the centre-half forward. High. Players setting himself. Three good little players up. Handball wildly away, McDermott with an opportunity, gives it to Seabone. Seabone's with a bit of strike, Colsey coming through quickly. He can't take possession, but he knocks it forward. Walsh jumps on top of the ball for Glenelg, and they'll bounce it down just inside the half-forward line. You're seeing it on 7 Sport, Torrens 3-5, Glenelg 1 point. Seabone just waited for a fraction too long to uh, think about that disposal, and uh, that's why the ball's still there. Gibbs again. Here's a chance now for the Eagles. He goes straight into Roberts. Doopey! Good judgment. The ball floated late then, and uh, it went past Roberts, but Doopey was equal to the task. Perhaps a surprise omission from the state squad, although it's early days. Downey. That was very well judged also. Mark Downey. Short. Bit of looseness up there, and uh, that looks like Barrett. Stephen Barrett, the Eagle 3-5, the Bay's a point. Kicks right into the square. What a lovely looking kick that was. He followed it. His first goal, the Eagles 4-5, Glenelg 1 point. The West Torrance certainly seem to be playing at a pace much above that of Glenelg. Glenelg may be a little bit tired from their game in the Escort Cup on Tuesday night, but I don't think any of us should sell West Torrance short in any way, shape or form. They beat North Adelaide last week in a great performance that looks like this afternoon they're going to carry on because they're certainly right at the ball and they're moving it quickly. I think the Eagles' record against the Bays at Football Park, apart from Escort Cup recently, has been pretty good. Marshall wants a free kick. The umpire said not there. Weston, have a look at that. Belts it to the square. Roberts, one grab, can't back it up. Quick kick away. Kick Roberts. Ball got a snap. Three goals, Roberts. The Eagles now 5-5 five, five for Lil, one point. See, that certainly was a great take and snap by John Roberts. The big fellow trying to recover. Paul Weston's kick coming in. It was a little bit wobbly. And he put it down in front of himself, then turned around. I thought he might have handballed it over the top, but no, he went straight into the kick, put it around his opponent's body and threw the goals. So that's a great goal for West Torrens there. 5-5, 35, Glenelg one point. Torrens in front by 34 points. Well, the Bays are going to have to uh, slip into another gear if they can, because the gear they're in at the moment not doing much for them. Marshall got the free kick this time. Perhaps that was the one he wanted last time. Away he goes. The daisy cut it, and it's well put. Gavin Watt. The Bay's tacking against the breeze. They're going to the southern or golf course end. Garten leads. The Walsh kick is a nice-looking kick right into the square. Big pack of players. The punch away comes. In goes Hank. He went in with feet then, and uh, didn't really intend to pick the ball up. But umpire Semler is going to bounce it. Right forward pocket. Lindsay doing a bit of marshalling down there. In fact, he goes to take the knock. Kidney's pushed on delivery. So uh, at 24 minutes, coming up on 24 minutes, Torrens 5-5, the Bay's one point on seven's big lead. It'll be Henwood setting himself up in this forward line. Carey's on the ball. Henwood at full forward, going for the knock. Coffin coming in from the back, follows it through, but can't hold his feet. Colsey picks it up. He's got it in the direction. The Nilk have earned a free kick here. A holding the ball decision against Andrew Colsey. Now an opportunity for Robin Kidney. The Nilk need this goal. And they need it badly. Fifth kick. It's a very good kick too, Robin Kidney. Allowed from the wind. Blowing in from that 
right hand side of the screen so Glenelg first goal is on the scoreboard right at the time on period Glenelg 1-1 trailing West Collins five goals five Carey and Cunningham the ball just drops dead players going in hard Colsey keen to atone himself for that last one when he got caught holding the ball went in very hard then McDermott giving the ball up he's in everything it's Chris McDermott Western now with Carey backs into Carey foot gets hold of the ball Taylor puts a hand on it but can't take it through leaves it behind for David Kernahan he goes to half forward Kidney's pushed in the back he has pushed his opponent in the back and Robert Enright just at the last second and Enright will take the free kick he's out on the half back line goes for Cunningham John Cunningham going to meet that ball but a wild handball ball by Maynard allows Wilson to come out he's going slow motion and he's caught holding the ball up by not even wasting a half a second to get that decision copping into half foot into the full forward area McIndoe coming out David Kernahan now onto his left foot showing a bit of pace to the big fellow but down he gets there just in time for time blocks it off his boot uh, economy sorry just in time so it'll be a throw in right inside the half forward line for the they need another goal they need it badly Enwood and Cunningham over the top of Maynard but the quick kick forward McDermott it comes off hands chance now for Economo as he gets it back to centre wing to Downey Downey's tackled well by McDermott McDermott is legged and he'll have a free kick the Bays have uh, lifted the momentum just they'd love a couple of goals before the break still getting a little bit loose there in the centre up goes McIndoe couldn't mark the ball off hands now the Bay's another chance free kick a trip against uh, Kernahan it was McIndoe is on hands and knees there and uh, Walsh in fact is the player and he'll take it 15 metres out directly in front so Paul Weston wouldn't be too happy seeing the 5-5 five, five to 5-5 five, five to 0 lead being whittled away late in the first quarter. Bear in mind the Eagles going with the breeze. In fact, Kidney will be the final taker of the kick. His second goal, the Bays 2-1, the Eagles 5-5. Five, five. Yes, there was a second free kick, there's no doubt about it, but I think the time it takes for the sound to get up here to us, Peter, that, that the other in fact, has blown his whistle for the first free kick, which is when Robin Kidney came out and tripped over in front there players into his back and he's got that free kick and he scored the second goal his two goals are in fact the Lils two five five to two one Torrens well in front 35 to 13 Gary Cunningham Cunningham a strong body Sims the kick smothered Hank a little bit of pace Tom Hank Marshall Salisbury Alan Stringer got a late hand ball away put Maynard under a lot of pressure the Sims kick forward I think may have been touched Seagram didn't mark it but he recovers very well chipped the ball out but it's got a little bit of height to it to give uh, Wayne Stringer the chance now David Kernahan a bit of trouble out there Wayne Stringer Seabone again that's where it all started centre wing now McDermott and Cunningham and the ball in the crowd yell Finally, David Kernahan gets the boot to it. A chance now for Sims. He's in the centre of the ground. Bay players up to the ball now. Alan Stringer. Kidney couldn't get to the drop of it. Gavin Walsh, though, has dropped the run. He puts it up high. Henwood's behind. But the ball went over the top. Through for a point. Glenelg 2-2. Two -two, the Eagles 5-5. Five -five. West Tigers have either dropped off a bit or Glenelg have picked up, and I think it's the latter. I think Glenelg have picked up their tempo now. Kicking straight up the centre of the ground. In the full western direction. Given away by Downey. Now an opportunity for Smith. He goes to Taylor. He gets his first opportunity to get at it. Salisbury's after him. This is what Ron Taylor can do. He's run. He's usually not a bad kick, but he's overstriding on this occasion. He just pushes it out of bounds. So seven sport at football park at the end of the first quarter. West Torrens 5-5-35, Glenelg 2-2-14.
Start of the second quarter here at Football Park. Torrance 5-5, five, five, Glenelg 2-2. Two, two. Torrance had the use of a slight breeze in the first quarter. Took great advantage of it. Two goals to Glenelg in the latter part of the quarter in the last five minutes. It just held them in the game. But West Torrance very quick in the early part of this game here at Football Park. Be a rebound right in the centre of the square. Henwood and Cunningham. Cunningham from behind pushes Henwood in the back. And Henwood takes the free kick. He's usually a prodigious kick. Not this time. He's gone sideways. He's kicked it with his big toe. Bruce Lindsay trying to get the control of the ball. Does the dive of the flying swan. As it goes out of bounds ahead of him. On the centre wing. Right in front of the member stand at Football Park. Max Cruz just uh, getting back on uh, Paul Weston there. So... Cruz at centre-half back now. I'm not sure where Seabome is. He's into the back pocket. Quick kick forward. Uh, goes out at right half-forward flank for the Bays. So Graham Corn's not perhaps totally satisfied with Seabome on Weston. Cruz has got the job now. Wilson with the tap down for the Eagles. Economu in there as well. The play at the bottom of the pack, as you would expect, Robin Kidney. He's earned a few free kicks today. He's kicked two goals. Garton taking the ruck against Wilson. Kernahan, Kidney, McDermott, centre half forward. The punch away comes. Alan Stringer threw the ball out, copping the handball to Marshall was good. Now Salisbury with the run of it. Into the pocket he goes. He gets boot to ball eventually. It was not a bad effort. He was under a bit of pressure, but a point only. Glenelg 2-3, Torrens 5-5. Five, five. So Scott, Scott Salisbury getting up into that forward line. Colsey. Goes back towards the centre of the ground. We're down his made position. That's a very good kick. He had to put that in between two Glenelg players. He's done it perfectly. The ball not holding up that much into the breeze now. Certainly got a bit of carry on it. Now Pye's given a free kick. The push in the back. Paul Weston has been penalised. He looks at the umpire in dismay. David Grenvold. Well, that's a very good kick. That's covering some 60 metres to centre half forward. Adam Garden. We haven't seen much of him today. But that's how he'd like the ball to come to him with his height. His second kick. It's a good one too. It's as straight as an arrow. Is it long enough? It is. That's a beautiful kick after a very fine mark. The Nell moves to three goals, three. Torrens, 5-5 five, five on seven sport. Donovan coming on, Wayne Stringer off for the Tigers and uh, Paul Wesson wasn't happy with that free kick. I think he was explaining to the umpire all I was doing was going for the ball. But nevertheless, Grenvold got it to Garten and Garten did just what he did in the final series last year. Kicked goals from a long way out. 3-3 three, three, the Bays, the Eagles 5-5 five, five on Seven's big lead. John Cunningham... Wayne Henwood. Henwood takes possession and just gets a little kick away. Foot dies on top of the ball. The umpire will have another bounce. So important to get this ball out of the centre. West Torrens want to maintain their momentum. They lost it in the latter part of the first quarter after a very fine start. Cunningham high with his left hand. Foot out to hit quickly. Also with him, Smith. The umpire picked another free for Glenelg. The push in the back. And Gavin Walsh will be the recipient. 50 metres to full forward. Carey underneath it. Up goes the big fellow. Knocked away by West Torrens defence. Stringers underneath the ball. Enright coming through. And the ball remains stationary. Torrens 5-5. Five, five. Benil 3-3. Three, three. A lot of players around the ball. Benil needing a goal badly. Carey setting him to it. Tries to lay it backwards. Kidney's there. He can't take it. West Torrens very competitive for the ball though, very competitive indeed. There's no doubt that they called, caught the milk napping a little bit right at the start. I think the pace of West Torrens is a little disconcerting, but it's a fairly even tussle at the moment. Both teams into it. And away go West Torrens, out towards Plays and Turnahan. Turnahan takes position, he gives it away. Coming across is Donovan, who's just come onto the ground. Kicks it back into the full forward area, straight past Lindsay. Running it out of bounds for West Torrens, Peter McIndale. Only four players on the southern side of uh, the centre spot. That uh, tells the story. Colsey, quick kick away. Oh, Wilson, had a good day so far. The 
down, a kick will be marked by Max Cruz. Weston was slightly under that ball. Max Cruz now will go as long as he can. Peter Carey lumbers out, the man in front, Cunningham. Walsh got a quick kick away, but it's uh, running into the pocket out there with Hank and Marshall. Enright runs it over the line, so we'll see a throw in. No, it came off his boot. Came off the boot of either Hank or Enright, and it's going to be McDermott. Very difficult to kick a goal from that angle. That's uh, saying something that's fairly obvious. Anything that's short may be used. Max Cruz is expending a lot of energy running down there. The punch away from McIndoe sees it go out of bounds. Left forward pocket now. 3-3 three, three, the Tigers, the Eagles 5-5. Five, five. Gary Cunningham, Cunningham doing a lot of work. He's gonna to have to continue to do it though. Copping nearly got his head pulled off. Foot marked it. McDermott on the rebound. Into the right boot and he bottles that as well. His second goal, his first in fact. The Tigers 4-3, Torrens 5-5. Five, five. Well, there's certainly been a lot of nothing happening at the moment. A handy free kick there for a kick out of bounds on the full two. McDermott saw him kick it back in. By the time he got back into the square and all the fiddling around had been completed, he was the one who received the scrubby bit of play, picked it up and kicked truly. So West Torrens, their lead being whittled back slowly by Glenelg. They're only eight points behind now, and they're certainly playing a lot better, and West Torrens falling well out of the game. The Eagles need uh, some scoring, obviously. Smith again wheels out of the pack, holding the ball, the umpire has indicated. So it's a Marshall free kick. Marshall's great ability to, to pass the ball here. Eight kicks Marshall. Carey on a lead, he got a bit of a bump then. Kernahan. Donovan. Runs into a lot of trouble, that's holding the ball as well. kick to Downey brings it up towards centre wing McDermott's under the ball good mark kick the Bay's last goal McDermott goes in long Garton is down there and he's got it good powerful mark it's good mark too and uh, distance is no problem for this man I think he's relished the, uh, the responsibility given to him today. Put him at centre half forward and uh, he knows it's a tough spot. It's a fine kick, second goal. The Bay's 5-3 now, the Eagles 5-5 on seventh big lead. Well, that's the second occasion that Adam Garten's had the opportunity to get right at that footy from a very good kick that's been put to him. And it was Chris McDermott on that occasion as he kicked the ball forward after receiving a loose kick from the West Torrens defence. And Garth running straight at it and flying strongly, took the mark. A very well controlled kick too. So Donnell, two points behind and really starting to run. Cunningham and Henwood in ruck. Henwood gets the benefit of the bounce. Got his hand to it. Quick kick away Smith for the Eagles in front. Couldn't mark the ball. He gets it out well, though, to Colsey. Colsey to Sims. Roberts into the pocket. Doofy's got the pace, though. Very well played. Cruz. Puts a high one to Grenville. Doofy only touched that ball as Sims picked it up on the rebound. Mistake by Seabone. Sees Barrett pounce on the ball, but he's only snapped the point. So uh, the Eagles would be happy that they finally got it up there. The 5-6 now to the Bay's 5-3. Very difficult mark to take that one by John Seabone. Ball spinning very vigorously. It always look easy. You just seem to get out of the top of your fingers, particularly when you're at stretch. Not an easy one to take. I thought Stephen Barrett's error was a little worse, in fact. I think that was a goal that was definitely kickable. Ross gives up the centre of the ground. Paul Weston. He's had Max Cruz shifted onto him. Come wide, given Sims an opportunity to get a run at it. In he comes, and he's hit the post. He felt fairly confident he played on. Torrance 5 7, Benil 5 3. Gee, it's a pretty useful kick by Weston. Ooh, right where he wanted it, and uh, gave him the chance, in fact, to do uh, one of two things stop or play on. 
times change very close now as uh, number 39 Paul Johansson gets ready Ross Gibbs taking the kick off he's aimed at it Weston again he's uh, given him a challenge mark one can you do it again Sims wide to the pocket to foot foot just keeps it in got it back towards Smith but it rolls over the line so we'll see it throw in Justin Smith uh, not a bad player we see again Paul Weston taking the ruck work when it goes into the forward line. If it goes a bit further, it'll be Roberts. You can't expect Cunningham to do all of that work. Henwood, a bit powerful there. Quick kick away, Pillmore. Roberts is completely wrong-footed by a bad bounce. And Ross Gibbs. Away he goes. Loves to run. Five kicks Gibbs, but that's not a good one. Cunningham was lurking. Roberts under the ball. A big punch away comes. In fact, it was Weston under the ball. He was in front of Roberts. It's against Max Cruz, who is having plenty to say. Can't understand that, Peter. We watch that every week. Players coming from behind spoiling. Sometimes the umpires pay the free kick for the spoil. Other times they don't. Max Cruz, a little unlucky. Weston lines up. Kick number seven. Straight through the centre. Two goals for Weston. Torrens get an important one. 6-7 now to the base, 5-3. A free kick in a place like that, pretty handy, particularly to a player like Paul Weston. He bodied himself underneath the pack. Over the top came Cruz. Maybe he had a hand in Weston's back as he flew into the air, but it was certainly a very nice spoil away of the ball. He hit it very cleanly. And of course, West Torrens is very happy to accept that. So they're back, holding their ground again. This is very important. Johansson's come onto the ground for them, and they need some more goals. Yes, they certainly do. Punch away there from Wilson, who appears to uh, be on the ball now. Dale Wilson. They're running it forward now, the, the Eagles. Pays normally kicks superbly. Roberts couldn't mark the ball. He tries to recover. In goes foot. He recovers. Gee, that's a great kick back to the square. But it was Salisbury, who was pretty cool. Now Smith with the left boot. He wants down and finds him. There was nothing offering in the centre. Now there is. But down he goes long. Foot's the only one there that can do anything. There's Bay players everywhere. Barrett, left foot. Not a bad effort. He couldn't get it through. Robert, all it really needed in all of that exercise was one player free in front of goal. There were a few West Island players around there, but they couldn't make a decision quickly enough to give the ball away. As a result, they got themselves a little bit of strife in the end. Pays from behind. A very nice spoil away. Pillmore competing there with Kidney. Kidney takes possession. He's at half-back. All good competition for the ball on the half-back line. Umpire will bounce. Half-forward for West Torrance. You see Weston going with him. Weston just laying up and the ball down to Kidney, though. Kidney kicks it blindly forward. Big fellow, a little bit slow getting forward there. And Wilson, he certainly wasn't in a hurry. Took him a while to get wound up. Looked as though it was going to be quite an easy mark. But he didn't even make the grade in the end. So there'll be another bounce. He's getting a little bit closer towards the centre. Cunningham's in there this time. Quick left footer. Kernahan now with an opportunity. He's only had an arm held. Cruz, he's gone. Taken from him by Barry. Did some very fine work in the first quarter. He's gone in wide. Roberts is going to get a free kick against him on this occasion. As he interferes with Chris, Chris Duthie. And the fly for that ball. Johansson at centre half back. The Torrens uh, Brains Trust obviously worried about Wilson on Garden. Didn't have the pace to go with the big chap. Sims runs away from centre wing. Bounces with the right hand and kicks with the left with the right. Bounces with the left hand, should I say? Kicks with the right boot. Weston uh, couldn't quite keep that ball in. It's interesting watching Ron Taylor then. He just allowed Paul Weston to stand out there. Didn't go to help him at all. He was just hoping he'd get it back. And that was a very bad kick forward by Sims, Peter. Yes, it wasn't, Robert. He had the chance to use the right boot and centre it. Henwood, very powerful. Centre wing. Garton off hands. Smith to Hank. Quick kick away, Sims. Now, the chance to use the right boot this time. Roberts leads into centre half forward. Ooh. Oh, he marked the ball, but he pushed Salisbury in the back. Just before the event, he really ran into a brick wall there, Roberts, and uh, <laughs> kept going. Pushed Scott Salisbury and then took the mark. Not a bad effort to mark that ball, though. Garden. 
couldn't mark it. McDermott, very clever, change of direction through the back door. McIndoe and Carey, McIndoe in front, big super behind. He's got the ball though, got it out brilliantly to Walsh. Now McDermott, gee, got down there quickly. And he's put it through. Great goal, McDermott, his second. The Bay 6 3, Torrens 6 8. Well, that was well done by Peter Carey to show how important strength is. When he came out for that ball, he went vigorously at it, took possession of it. A magnificent little reflex handball out. Saw McDermott then come around the front of the pack and just controlled his left foot into the square. Just well controlled indeed it was too because he could have just blazed away, but he just sat it into the square rather than try and kick it out of the ground. And so Glenelg, five points behind. They've got three players that have kicked uh, two goals. McDermott, Garton and uh, Kidney. For the base, through goes Marshall. Did that very well. Came onto the left boot. Lindsay was interfered with. Got one right in the ear hole on that occasion. Free kick. 15 metres as well. Weston comes out to the grandstand side late. He's got a bit of a yard on Max Cruz now. He didn't mark it, but he recovered brilliantly. He knows where the ball is, Paul Weston. Always. Oh, dear idea. Ron Taylor on that occasion saw Roberts darting back towards the goal. He knew that a long kick was what was wanted. And he put a bit too much power into it, Robert, and sprayed it. Yes, it certainly wasn't good. Ross Gibbs has got to take the free kick, though. Just do the other some 20 metres further around the boundary line. I don't think it mattered much who he took it if he wanted to take it 20 metres further around. Gibbs to centre wing. Oh, Lindsay. Great mark. Downey gives him the lead into the centre-half forward position. A pretty dangerous kick by Bruce Lindsay. And Mark Donovan's there to, to mark it. Donovan looking for Garton. All spoiled away on this occasion, though, by Johansson. Lindsay. Out wide. Oh, great mark. That is a fantastic mark by Andrew Pace. Reminds me of the one he took last year on the Adelaide Oval, running the wrong way, or the same way as the ball. He's just kicking off the edge of his boot, Taylor in front of Salisbury. The ball just dribbles out of bounds and over the line as Craig Woodlands comes on and David Grenville goes on. Right half forward flank for the, for the Eagles. And they lead 6-8 to Glenelg 6-3 on Seven's big lead. Peter, Peter Carey having a, a run. Kidney nearly fell over, but uh, got out of it. Hayes again punches. Alan Stringer, he didn't keep it in. The umpire's going to throw it in. Right in front of the coach's box there as uh, Alan Stringer nearly loses the boot. Hasn't been a bad quarter by the Eagles because they've been going against the breeze and uh, they've only got one goal, but they haven't let Glenelg get that run yet. Sims, he's got a space, but he has to bring it back. Roberts with the run of it, if he's good enough. The pace of Barrett. Brilliant, back to Roberts. No one to give it to. Three against two there as Gibbs tries to bring it away, but Downey marks it. What well, great play by Barrett, Peter. Certainly was, Robert. He just didn't give up, and his tackle has now uh, given the opportunity for Downey to have a kick at goal. Five marks, Downey. This is his ninth kick. Been a good player, and he's had five handballs. Gee. Yes, it was three on two against there uh, on, on that occasion, so Barrett really had to do the, the work of two men. Now he's pulled that way to the left. Roberts, great mark. In a one-out situation where they're standing rather than jumping, it's Roberts because he's too strong. Now, this will test him. He's kicked four in the, third, in the first quarter. This is his fifth kick. He put it through. Four goals, John Roberts. The Eagles 7-8. The Bays 6-3. That certainly was a very inspiring bit of play by Stephen Barrett just a few moments ago when he made the opportunity for West Torrens to stop that rebound kick which was coming out from the defence and then when it came back we saw John Roberts at his very best taking the mark and then doing what every full forward should do. That kick a goal from any angle you like to name and he's done it well. Approaching 20 minutes now in the second quarter on Seven's big lead. Wilson and Carey. Carey easily. Kidney down, holding the ball. Well, he normally gets free kicks, Kidney, but uh, 
the tackle was too good on that occasion. The Coles, he kicked to half forward. Barrett from behind, still working hard. Max Cruz is finding it hard out there. The tackling's pretty quick. But he'll get a free kick for a high one over the shoulder. Ooh, Hillmore, Gibbs. Gibbs in trouble. What a good handball from Max Cruz there. It had too much air in it. Hillmore now, left boot. Roberts will mark this. No, it went over him. It floated. In goes Taylor. Will of the wisp. Can he get the ball out? There's bodies everywhere in there. The umpire is going to bounce it. Gee, the Pilmore kick off the boot looked good, but it, uh, it went up and it just kept going. Roberts couldn't quite judge the flight of it, and he ran straight under it. 15 metres from the Eagle goal. The Eagles by 15, by uh, 11 points. Over the top, Barrett, brilliant Weston, but the whistle had gone. Weston's going to get a free kick. Penalising the side, I think Barrett would have kicked the goal then, Robert. Gee, I thought that was a very bad decision. I don't think Stephen Barrett's too happy about that. Because as Paul Weston was tripped, he just handballed the ball over the top with the trip. And I thought Tyler's were going to take advantage of it. Oh, Weston's, has he kicked it? No, he's missed it. Oh, I don't think that they'd be too happy about that. I agree with your comment, Robert. That, uh, that clearly was to the disadvantage of the Eagles. Ross Gibbs from fullback likes to kick in and that's a lovely kick too it's right out the center wing Colsey and Stringer Colsey off hand Stringer looks out of leg hill Sims Roberts can't take complete the mark Duthie's got him caps it out holding the ball didn't give him much time to get rid of it when he slipped over still if it's consistent it's okay as long as it happens to both sides all day David Marshall way he goes with his left foot great two-sided player on this occasion, the left foot kick, not carrying the distance. Coles, he's got possession from Lindsay. His kick out wide is short. Cruz. Max Cruz playing at centre half back. Wide to the, to the outer side, coming from behind Lindsay. He can't take possession. McDermott's in there fighting. Throws the ball out. Coles he now with a wobbly kick forward. Foot's up there. Cruz is two against one. Weston back at centre half forward on his own. Ball knocked out towards him, just coming across the Salisbury, but Weston evade. Smith now with an opportunity, trying to keep it in play to Pilmore. And Gibbs is there to take it out of bounds. So 7-9, West Oren, and L6-3. In a pretty scrubby bit of passage of play at the moment as the ball's just running around the boundary line. Not a bad effort, the Eagles. 16 scoring shots to nine. They've, they've certainly had the edge on the bays in this first half. Pilmore. He's an active rover. Well, he had his head taken off. He's going to get a free kick. But again, one might argue, uh, is it to the Eagles' disadvantage? Ricocheted off Western towards Roberts there, so perhaps this one is, uh, is the correct one. Colsey is short. Pilmore's going to go for home, though. Taylor led. Lovely looking kick. Pilmore, Roberts couldn't mark the ball. Barrett, the first to recover, he's not a bad kick back, if he has one. Foot onto the right foot, hooks it back and Kerry can't mark it, so we see another point. The Eagles 7-10, the Bay 6-3 on Sevens Big League. Yeah. Andrew Coles, he's standing in the middle of the ground on his own then. The Pilmore didn't see him, Get the blinkers on. Duthie to the outer side, off hands from Enright. Kicked forward quickly by West Torrance player Smith. Weston underneath it, foot coming through quickly. He gets it out to end right, he's up into that half forward line. A little bit slow on the turn. Pilmore, he's caught, good tackle by Kernahan. He in turn is caught by Sims and he gets it across to Marshall. Now Glenelg with an opportunity. Woodlands. McDermott running, well done. Ran all the way from half back as he sets up an opportunity for Coffey. He can't complete the mark, recovers quickly, taps it out. It's going to be a bounce down that centre half forward. After a very bad miss there by Stephen Copping. He won't be happy with himself at all. Very promising bit of play that by Glenelg on the outer side. On the half forward line's Garten for Glenelg. Up against Wilson. Maynard. In the goal square, Henwood. He's got the mobility. Being held on to, but he's got the recovery. He's too good. 
So finally, Wayne Henwood getting Good Ilk's seventh goal, his first. Good Ilk 7 3, Torrance 7 10 on Sevens League. Gee, that was uh, really an interesting situation because uh, they really had the whole circus to themselves, McIndoe and Henwood. And it was a question of who was going to get up first. And it was the big man himself, Wayne Henwood, who got up and kicked the goal. And the Bays are seven points behind on Sevens Big League. Carey gets a bounce to favour him. Knocks it back towards McDermott. Oh, he's hit high around the head. The player coming in and just jumping in the air rather blindly. Looked like Stephen Barrett. A little bit uncontrolled then. The only uncontrolled thing he's done today. He's played very well in this first half. McDermott, 10th kick to the outer side. Coming in from behind. West Torrance as they spoil away. Wilson, that's a little bit better movement by him. Gets it across to Smith. Smith long into Roberts. He's one out with Duthie. Duthie checking him. He kicks too long. Gibbs getting back to back up. Fillmore after him. And Gibbs just safely to the boundary line. Very well controlled kick. Just running it over, over the boundary. We're into time on in the second quarter. West Torrance have held on pretty well after a very good start to the game. They're leading 7-10 to 7-3. Cunningham is uh, walking along the boundary there. Peter Carey has to get rid of that very quickly. McDermott can't get rid of it either, so there'll be a bounce. Left half forward flank. The Eagles in attack. And, uh, it's been a pretty good game for them. The focal points, Weston and Roberts, have kicked six of the seven goals. McDermott with a handball out. Barrett's handball went straight to Gibbs. He kicked to the centre of the ground. Andrew Pays. She's got balance and poise, this player. Left boot finally. That wasn't too flash. Gibbs again. Luthi will be next. And then Maynard might have a shot after that. He's on centre wing. Got plenty of uh, room to move in. Alan Springer now. Left boot is superb to Garden. Garton, I think, too far out to score. Henwood on a lead. McIndoe will come from behind. Popping weights down. Couldn't snare it. Kidney does. Right foot. And misses. Oh, not a bad uh, effort, though, Kidney. 7-4 the Bays. The Eagles 7-10. Peter McIndoe to bring the ball in as Ron Taylor comes off. He's had a very quiet first half. Kevin Hill on. Exciting player, Kevin Hill too. Might just do something in a hurry. Wilson puts his hands up, nothing happens. Garton gets hold of it, he gives it to Maynard. Woodlands, Lindsay Laid on the scene. Kidney. The umpire says not holding the ball on this occasion. Had been pretty deadly today. But quite rightly, I don't think he had much chance to get rid of it. Wilson's going for the ruck with him. Ball just flies in the air. Marshall puts a hand on it and gets some protection. Maynard bumped off the ball very well too. Walsh into the front of the square. The Nerd with an opportunity. Ball bounces awkwardly. Oops, the player there who could have taken possession hits it blindly to Garton. The big fellow straightens up. That was a very careful error. So Adam Garton kicking straight. It's his third goal. Bunnell, eight goals for Torrance, 7-10 on Seven's big league. Well, there's no doubt about Garten when he's in a big open space like that. He uh, can show that he's agile enough to get around on uh, players coming at him. And he's kicked them with brilliant three goals this quarter. Cunningham's back on the ground now to replace Johansson. Bunnell, uh, 8-4, the same score as the Eagles, 7-10. Cunningham's gone to centre half back. He's been doing the ruck. He's giving Wilson a run in the ruck. He's obviously the spare ruckman. It's him that gets the ball forward. Tackled heavily is Fillmore by Gibbs. And holding the man decision on this occasion. The umpire are judging that Fillmore, in fact, did not take the ball. He just knocked it away. I'm inclined to agree with him. Except there's a few other players done that today and different things have happened. Fillmore's kick. Oh, it's carrying some distance. A handy free kick with a very handy goal. So Torrens, 8-10, Glenelg, 8-4, six points of difference as Pilmore kicks his first. Well, that's an unusual one, that one. Uh, not an unusual one, it's a, it's a hard one to judge uh, from the umpires. You can use your own judgment there. Did he have it when he was tackled or didn't he? Nevertheless, he got the free kick. It was a fine kick at goal. There doesn't appear to be much breeze here at the moment. 
Carey and Cunningham. Cunningham straight back in the ruck. Wilson to centre half back. Marshall. He's had a few touches. Seabone gets it back towards McDermott. He's worked hard. Just to try to get the little back into the side. Can't take possession. Sims gets it forward. Duthie chasing the ball as it runs towards the line. He relieves and kicks to the outer side. Just keeping it inside. Smith's out there for West Torrens, but he can't take it. So it's out of bounds on the half-forward line. West Torrens into attack. The breeze, I think it's going pretty well across the ground at the moment. Carey towards Marshall and Sims. No one able to take possession. Poolmore turns quickly, then kicks a blind one away to Maynard. He says thank you very much as he heads to half-forward. Coming over the top guard, and he's flattened everybody. And a free kick's going to be paid against, not against Garten, but against Kidney, who pushed in right in the back on it when they were coming in. O'Connor move, Cunningham, Torrens building, Roberts with the opportunity. And Roberts is marked on the siren. This becomes a very important goal for them, Peter. Going in two in front at half time be pretty handy. This is not much breeze either, Robert. Uh appears to have dropped away slightly. Roberts with four goals. Could this be five before the break? 45 metres. He's dropped it like a bag of spuds. Well, I think that wind's coming from the east of it. It's faded away outside the right-hand post. So Torrens go in at half-time. Seven points clear. They're eight goals, 11. Leading Glenelg, eight four on seven's big lead. The start of the second half here at Football Park. Peter Carey is going to start on the interchange bench, which is, I think, where he started in last year's grand final. Henwood in ruck. Cunningham got a quick handball out. Downey, foot. He'll go long to the running Roberts. He's at full forward. Kick four in the first half. Weston quick onto that left boot. Ross Gibbs leads in the race of the ball right into the pocket. Has a bit of big think about what to do. Now Wayne Stringer. He went off in that second quarter too. Sims, here's a chance for the Eagles. Sims lines it up. That ball is coming back. And it's through. Great start for the Eagles. Sims' first goal. And uh, the Eagles now 9-11 to the Bays 8-4. There was a great bit of play in that pocket then by Barry Pilmore. Instead of running at Ross Gibbs, as Ross Gibbs hoped he would, then he would have just ducked around him. Pilmore held ground, stalked him. And then when the ball came wildly and blindly forward, there we saw Sims take a very good fingertip mark, the ball wobbling in the air, and then played on as he had earlier and kicked it straight with his 14th kick. Cunningham in ruck against Henwood. The Eagles have played it pretty well today. They perhaps should be further in front at the half-time break. A push in the back will go against Downey, and it'll be taken by Kernahan. He quickly moves it out to McDermott, possibly the Bay's best player. Garton had a very good second quarter. Economou punches away. Quick kick there by Kidney. Under the ball there is Walsh. He started at full forward, in fact, in this uh, third quarter, which is an unusual move. But uh, there's no reason why he can't play it. His disposal is very good, and he's a pretty big young lad. The breeze has dropped away a lot. It was favouring the northern end in the first quarter. It still is, but not to the same extent. Point only. Glenelg 8-5, the Eagles 9-11. Gavin Walsh's second point. McIndoe. Gee, that was a pretty confident kick. Lindsay's been called to play on. He just handles away. Walsh gets another opportunity, and this time he makes no mistake. So there's two bits of play there, both a little bit doubtful. The first one was McIndoe kicked it short out, and then the straight away Lindsay went to play on. The umpire called him play on, and it's been picked up and converted. So West Torrens hit get it caught up a little bit by Glenelg who are now nine goals five Torrens 9-11 well Gavin Walsh his first stint at full forward and uh, the set shot at goal didn't work but a snap did Glenelg run of races out onto the ground there's something happening going to Marshall Henwood put his hand on that one Smith to the Eagles may not in very hard we'll try and pick up what that was all about in a minute Uh, hard to pick up a lot of these moves. There's been plenty of them. We can tell you today that Max Cruz is still at centre-half back on uh, Paul Weston. Wayne Stringer with a bit of pace. Weston there. The handball
ball didn't reach Cruz. Colsey. Chance again for the Eagles as Pays tries to get past Kernahan, but the pace of Boothy is too good. Now McDermott. Great handball to Marshall. Maynard wants it next, but copping is the aim. Economu punches away. Played well, Economu. I still don't think copping's fit, though. Woodlands. Short. Beautifully put to Adam Garden. Boy, he loves this centre-half forward spot. The big chap. He's taken five big marks. He's had six kicks. And he kicked three goals in that second quarter. Got under that a bit. The ball's spinning. Big leap. No mark taken. Kidney. He'll go on to the left foot. Great goal, Kidney. His third. Linnell. 10-6, 10-5, should I say. The Eagles 9-11. Robert Kidney took his time about kicking that. He could pick the ball up, and he still had plenty of time when he picked it up to boot it through. So Gunnell is certainly starting the second half with a little bit more surety. Even though Thomas kicked an early goal, Glenelg have replied with two, and they now find themselves back up with the West Torrens side. And West Torrens, they need a bit of that move that they had in the first half, a little bit more surety in their ball play. 20 scoring shots for the Eagles, the Bay's 15, Cunningham got the smash away, it went to Weston but uh, he didn't really have a chance to pick it up, a lot of players in there and the umpire will have to bounce that again as uh, Henwood is thrown out of the pack, Garton's the top scorer for the Bay's along with Kidney with three each, John Roberts has got four for the uh, Eagles, Cunningham again wins the the tap out, McDermott to Kernahan, back to the centre, Henwood, just a fraction slow to get rid of it, McDermott wasn't, Marshall to Donovan, screws the ball up forward, Copping's in a good spot, the punch away again comes, Garton's in trouble, the in right kick finds foot, now Economu, Barrett with plenty of pace out in front of Seabone, but he got a bad bounce, Seabone the chance to return it, which he does to Kernahan, who went without the ball. Gee, that was a strong attack on the attack on the ball by Barrett. Kernahan caught one high. Weston taps it wide for the running player out there, Economu, but uh, to no effect. Out of bounds on the half forward line of West Torrance. 9 11 they are. Scores all tied up. Glenelg 10 5. Henwood coming in with Weston. Henwood too strong. Just gives it away quickly to Seabone. He gets one over the top. Opportunity for Maynard. It's smothered off his boot by Pace. He's done some good work today. He's hit very hard by Kernahan. Kernahan going in very strongly. And a free kick being paid to Glenelg. Peter Maynard it is. Loves getting free kicks. And away he goes. Straight to centre half forward. Garton in front. And Garton's got it. See, they've got the height. Glenelg. It's just a matter of being able to use it to get the kick in, to give it a chance. Here's another opportunity for Walsh. He's under the ball. He can't complete the mark. McIndoe spoils it away. There's going to be a free kick against Gavin Walsh, who dives on top of Bruce Lindsay. And Lindsay will take the free kick in the full-back position. Goes out to the running Colsey. He's got no one to boot it to, though. So he handballs it to Cunningham and runs it down. That's skewed off the side of Cunningham's boot and went straight to Marshall. Walsh on the lead, Marshall's 13th kick, Walsh into the pocket, but Woodland's in front, fingertip chance there, he couldn't mark it, back on it quick though, and he kicked it out, in the full. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was a better kick than that, in fact I think he is Robert. I'm sure he is, he couldn't do that again if he tried. West Torrens to Robert Enright, Woodland's it is who spoils it away. So the score's 9-11 to 10-5, all tied up, 20 shots to 15, Torrance certainly got the better in that department, but Connell, their skills good enough to give them the accuracy to stay in with limited opportunities, Woodland, McDermott, taps it on, coming out from the economy, he couldn't stop McDermott, McDermott's maintained his run, I'd say he's just got to kick it straight, it's just inside the left hand post, so McDermott with his third, Connell go to the lead for the first time, 11 goals, 5, Torrens 9-11 on Seven's big lead. Quick thinking by Woodlands there as he kicked the ball off the ground and uh, they had a bit of run up there, running out from goal with McDermott. He uh, 
thought about it a bit when he got the ball, but he elected to kick for goal, which was the right decision. He kicked his third. The Bays are, in fact, he's kicked four. The Bays are 11-5, the Eagles 9-11. Ball kicked blindly forward by Glenelg again. Another good opportunity for him right in front. Salisbury's up in the forward line now. Now Stringer coming in. Glenelg's starting to go. A lot more pressure on now as Maynard picks it up. Kicks long, high and strong. And Glenelg in a run as Maynard gets his first. Glenelg's 12th there, 12-5. Torrens, 9-11. Good combination uh, there as they worked it away from the centre of the ground. And uh, Maynard, who's coming back from a fairly debilitating sort of injury he was able to get hold of the ball and uh, he's a fine kick for goal and that was no exception so the bays are 12-5 now the eagles 9-11 and uh, can the eagles come back trailing by 12 points on seven's big lead wilson in the ruck now for west torrance against henwood wilson bangs it forward kernahan takes possession western's after in the handball's a bit careless kevin hill with an opportunity Takes the player down, Sims overruns the ball. Henwood now. Donovan. Cruz. Glenelg to centre wing to Salisbury. They're running pretty smoothly. Everything's going for them now as they're starting to make opportunities for themselves. Off hands. McDermott again. He's got another opportunity to go in short. Woodlands has the ball. He's about 40 metres from goal. And Glenelg moving steadily forward with some very good play. Some good running play and movement of the football now. A lot more direct. A lot less fiddling around. Craig Woodlands, 45 metres. Well, it was a strong kick, but it's not accurate. 12 6 now, Glenelg. Torrance, 9 11. Low trajectory kick there by Craig Woodlands. He, uh, he's a highly skilled player. He's a specialist half forward, and it's his job to kick goals, of course. McIndoe goes very wide. Barrett uses the body well. David Kernahan is one against three. Economou is tackled. Kernahan away with the ball now. Dermott's on the end of that handball. Puts it up high. In comes Garton. Oh, McIndoe did it brilliantly. Belts the ball out of full forward. Wayne Stringer very steady. Also Cruz. The running player out there, Henwood. He bangs that ball to full forward. Off hands a point. But, uh, Robert, I think this is probably the best that the Bays have looked today. Yes, they certainly started to run. It all happened on that outer side when Stephen Kernhan got a bit of a bit. The whole team seems to have got an injection. Good hands under the ball now, but Pay's coming into the side, takes the mark. Gets tackled well by Kidney. Fillmore now to Wilson. A lot of errors coming into West Torrance game. The handball not as accurate. Pay's is caught and put down. Play allowed to play on. And Stephen Coffey for one of the few occasions today. He's got near the ball. He's taken the mark right in front of goal. It's his sixth kick. Pretty quiet. 30 metres out. Not a long kick, Steve. Give you that bad leg, but that's a beautiful time kick. He's punched it straight through the centre. His first goal. The Melga now 13-7, leading West Torrance 9-11 on seven's big lead. Well, the Eagles starting to make a couple of mistakes now as Enright comes off to be replaced by Johansson. But the umpire had paid the free kick against Page, a very quick one, a holding the ball decision. The quick kick forward marked by Copping, and his kick, as Robert explained, was very accurate, very well delivered. 85 to 65, the Bays lead by 20 points. Wilson in the ruck, he's against Henwood. Henwood, full of fire now, Smith lets it go through his fingers. Saws his tackle, but not in position. He'll take the free kick. Going out wide, Woodlands underneath it has been paid the mark. Juggled mark. Very good mark, though. He was set up a little. Marshall running into the pocket. He's got Garton now with an opportunity to get a run at it. Here he comes from the side. The big fellow decides to stay down when he sees Copping in position. And finally, Salisbury. No, nope. has to put it over the line. Now he's going to have, a, he's going to have another attack on the umpire. A verbal attack. Not happy. He must have thought it was still in play. A throw in, alongside the Glenelg goal. Garton in front with Cunningham. Copping from behind. Everyone trying to get a bit of the ball. Copping's the one who gets in there after it first. Here comes McDermott. He's down in there with his head down, his tail up. 
And Earl looking to really press home this lead. They've built the 20 points in, in a flash of a second, in about five minutes. McDermott coming through very hard there for West Torrens with number 35, who I couldn't pick because they haven't got a 45. And 39, Oz Johansson. It's on behind play though, Robert, and uh, an altercation between Gart on, and it's still on. The umpire, after a second or third attempt, has finally decided to give Wilson the free kick, and it was against Adam Garthold. Big Henwood. <laughs> I think he forgot to take the mark once he got up there. And then it went out on the full. He's an interesting player, Wayne Henwood. I'll tell you what, he's a hard worker, but he's got some, some slightly unorthodox habits out there, but he can certainly be on my side. Fillmore. Good tackle by Kidney. Uh, it's a fraction high, said umpire Semler. So Pilmore's got the free kick. Plus 15 metres. And the Eagles, can they come back? That's not 15 metres, that's 50. Pilmore takes full advantage. Roberts on the lead. Up he goes. No mark. Smith now, if he's good enough, onto the left foot. Not quite good enough. He's kicked it out on the full. Justin Smith, so Torrens just can't bridge that gap. They still trail by 20 points here on Seven's big lead. They pressed the panic button a bit West Torrens. Justin Smith showing a dash of inexperience and he moved up beautifully to take that ball and then panic on possession. Alan Stringer. The centre wing Maynard setting himself with Barrett. Maynard put his hands on it. Down he collects the crumb. Players leading. He's going to go for distance. Floats it. Just dropping in short. Well scored away by Duthie. And out of bounds. An L13-7, Torrens 9-11. Torrens in desperate need now of some score. They've lost all that fine touch they had early. Their attack on the ball is still there. And they're fumbling it. They're not taking hold of it. The Nerl are taking hold of everything they get their hands on. Kick away by Hindle. It's a blind kick. Downey playing in the back play. Allowed to stand back there on his own. Goes across to the centre of the ground. Andrew Pays takes the mark. He's at centre half forward. At 60 metres from goal, Roberts goes out wide to the outer side. It's a great kick. It's found him. A very difficult score, um, angle to score from and distance. And if he gets onto one of these big ones, he might just be able to lift West Torrens. Very deliberate about it. He realises the pressure's right on him on this occasion. John Roberts. He's really given them a chance too. That's a magnificent kick. Just missing the right-hand post. He certainly did his best. He went for the shortest way home. Torrens 9-12. The nil 13-7 on seven's big lead. Ross Gibbs kicks out again. Roberts gets back. Maynard with uh, superior recovery ability there. Left boots it to Woodlands, who's covering a lot of territory. Woodlands now boots in long. Connor moves there on his own. He takes a fine mark been a real find for the West Torrens Club this year. Previously played for the Greek Football Club in Amateur League. Smith is off. Another mistake by the Eagles. Pounced upon by McDermott. Shorty goes to Walsh. Beautifully disposed. And Gavin Walsh got low to the ground for that. And uh, the Eagles have made a couple of flues and uh, the Tigers have pounced on them. McDermott, I think, would be Probably the Bay's best player. He's been in it right from the word go, McDermott. Walsh's eighth kick, just offline, a point. So Glenelg now advanced to 13-8. The Eagles 9-12 on seven's big lead. And Peter McIndoe to bring the ball back in. Now it's a test for West Tyrants to see whether they can really settle themselves. Peter Carey about to come back on the ground. Just getting himself off the bench. Free kick against Alan Stringer as he pushes Justin Smith in the back. He gives it to Joe Hanson. Joe Hanson towards it. Weston at centre half forward. Henwood gets across to Donovan. Taken very well off his boot by Sims. Sims hasn't got a lot of people to kick to. Gibbs dropping back as he's very good at. He loves that kick that comes in. He reads it so well. And he's taken the mark in the back pocket. Ross Gibbs. 12th kick. John Sebo playing at centre half back. Another, another nice one. The Nilk starting to lose a little bit of confidence now. McDermott is beating everything. He's really lifted. Wide to the outer side. Garton scored away from him on this occasion. Maynard 
Gets it away to Woodlands. Carey comes onto the ground. And Woodlands kicks a goal. Easy as that. Lavelle just came in quietly then. There was no pressure put on them. And Woodlands has kicked his first. Lavelle, 14-8. Torrens, 9-12. Here's the base making it look just a fraction uh, easier now. They, uh, they weathered a storm in the first half because the Eagles certainly had the possessions. And if they capitalised on them, they would have certainly gone in uh, at half-time with a far bigger advantage than just seven points. But they didn't. They paid for errors in this third quarter. Gwinelg have got the win back that they perhaps had taken out of their sails because of playing on Tuesday night. And they're now looking a pretty accomplished side. Wilson in the ruck with Carey. She smashes it forward to Weston. Weston leaves it for Colsey. Colsey to Pays. Pays gives it away to Barrett. Barrett into the full forward area. Roberts is behind. It's a good kick. It's carrying to him. It's flicked over the top towards Gibbs. Puts his body in front well too. What beautiful positioning is he. Runs to take that ball. Very well done. Clears a strong kick to Alan Stringer. Magnificent disposal. Clearing the top of justice. And Stringer flicking it around as he might well do. He hasn't had it very often. Just kicks it on quickly to McDermott. McDermott now to Maynard. Maynard to Marshall. They're very close to the boundary line. It'll be a free kick to David Marshall. He's allowed to play on, though. Maynard. Yeah, no, Walsh. Called play on. McIndoe gives it away to Cunningham. Quick kick. Under it is Downey, and that's a good mark. McDermott in far too late. So Mark Downey, who's been a good player for the Eagles, taking six marks. That's his 12th kick. Seabone. On his own, and that was a good mark. He may be at centre-half back again. Max Cruz. Not sure where he is at the moment. Woodlands. No, Max Cruz still at centre-half back. Woodlands, a good player. Puts it out into the pocket. A spilled mark there by Johansson. Downey again. Hank. Couldn't kick it to anybody. He brought up chalk with that. It's a nice. Coming up on 20 minutes now in this third quarter. 9-12 to 14-8. The Bay's leading on seven's big lead. It's on centre wing. Tyrant's in desperate need of a couple of goals before three-quarter time. Weston going for the ruck with Carey. Two old sparring partners together. Teammates of the past. Opponents today. Downing. Long and strong in towards Roberts. He sets himself under the play. Coming in behind was Gibbs, and he's going to be paid the mark. He took the chance then, Ross Gibbs. Went two on one. It's favoured him. He clears the centre wing. Colsey from behind. That's a better take by Justin Smith. It's his finishing of the play that's let him down a couple of times this quarter. Not his ability to get the ball. Cruz is caught. Kevin Hill. He goes out wide. Sees David Foote give him a lead up the outer side of the ground. He kicks only to Gibbs, though. He's done a bit of work this quarter, Ross Gibbs. And it's out of bounds in the forward pocket for West Torrens. They can't get any system going at all at the moment. 9-12 to Torrens, 14-8 to Glenelg on seven's big lead. We're in that right forward pocket. As uh, Robert had indicated, the Eagles need a score or two before the break. The tackle was a high one according to the umpire. He was right on the spot there. And uh, there is uh, Torrens' brains trust. A quick kick away finds Downey. From foot foot was the free kick man and uh, down he's got it at centre half forward it was an interesting pass Peter 30 metres out to 45 test themselves out a bit <laughs> well he should make the distance Mark Downey and he's got the accuracy too so it worked for them Downey's first goal the Eagles finally got one they're 10-12 now the Tigers 14-8 yeah, it certainly was an interesting pass one player was probably at about a 10 degree angle and the other player was another 10 or 15 metres further back. But obviously, they knew Mark down his ability. And he didn't let the side down either. That's 22 shots apiece. 72 points to 92. Glenelg, 20, point, uh, sorry, 20 points in front, even though the shots are even. At one stage, West Torrance had something like eight more shots for goal than Glenelg, but they fought back to put themselves in this top position. Wilson for the Eagles and uh, Carey for the Tigers. Wilson got his hand to it. McDermott again. He used uh, two attempts to get rid of it. And umpire Semler will have another bounce. Well, I think Paul Weston would have been disappointed at halftime. Not so much 
in the way his side was getting the ball, but the fact that they they got it far more often than Glenelgan only were up seven points. Western to Pilmore. Out comes Foot again. Good mark. Out in front of Gibbs. He always had that ball covered. Foot goes in long. Roberts, Duthie. Duthie's punch away was effective to Wayne Stringer. Now Seabone. Not a good handball because it had too much height. David Kernahan. Alan Stringer. In front. Good mark. Good strong mark. Colsey tried to spoil it, but uh, just didn't work. Johansson and Garton. Kidney. The handball just couldn't quite make it there to uh, Salisbury. So we're at right half forward flank. Been a good quarter for the Bays. They've advanced from 8 4 to 14 8. And to six goals, four. Easily their best quarter of play. Maynard got it out sweetly there to Alan Stringer. He went around in a circle and then put it up for Cropping. I think, uh, I think Stephen Cropping fell over then. Johansson. Oh, he gave it straight to Walsh. He puts it into the pocket. Bruce Lindsay. Johansson. <laughs> Lucky Fillmore was there. And he gave it to Barrett. Barrett's at ten and a half back. Had a very good first quarter and a half, but uh, not getting the ball as often now. Andrew Pays. Down he gives him a lead. He's on centre wing. Gives it back again. Pays coming through the centre half forward. Sim started the run, stopped his lead. And straight away, Seabone's intercepted. He's gone to centre half forward to Woodland. Woodland's on quickly now. He's got Copping in the pocket. He's missed kicked the ball slightly. But Copping hasn't. He's found Maynard. So Peter Maynard, back at about the same spot that Woodland's had it in terms of distance. A slightly greater angle. Gonna need a good long strong kick here. Gone for the screw punt. It hasn't worked. It's dropped short and Bruce Lindsay's read it best of all the players and he's taken the safe mark. Lindsay is going to come to grandstand side. He wants Weston. Let's see by him it is. Good mark. He's a beautiful kicker of the ball, Seabone. He rarely makes an error in that regard. My own calls the umpire. Downey. It's got 10 metres. He's in a lot of trouble. That's pounced on Downey. So you want to be lucky to get up. Saw the photograph of the black eye in the press during the week. But it may still be slightly closed. Although he's played very well, though. Downey. 14 8 the Bay. The Eagles 10 12. Carey and Wilson. Wilson smashed it forward. Wayne Stringer, a high tackle for the umpire. Pays is pulled off the top of the pack there by Carey. There's a bit of fire coming to the game. But uh, I don't think there's any real nastiness involved. West Torren, with more than a bit of fire, they've got to get it directed at that football somehow. They've got to take charge of it. Just as Glenelg have done for a large part of this quarter. Maynard going through looking for a free kick as he tumbles himself over. And he speaks to the umpire and says, why didn't I get it? The umpire not interested. Ron Taylor getting ready to come on for West Torrens. Had a pretty quiet day. Wilson gets it across to Johansson. He can get straight up back in the air to back to Wilson. Garton can't take the possession. So we'll have another bounce. We're halfway between the centre and the goal line. And it's been there for quite some time. The Mill would like it through there. Torrens would like it out. Up goes Garton with his leg out. Now boys penalised him for that. Wilson. High the centre wing. Sims coming in with a bit of a run at it. 15 metre penalty has been awarded in the meantime. Again, she sort of stopped at the moment, Peter. It's not a great deal happening. Everyone seems to be arguing and getting all disorganised about everything. It's probably to the Bay's advantage too, Robert, because they've got the, the advantage on the board. Colsey, Downey, tap it forward again. Now Max Crew gets another handball out. The running player there is Springer. Sort of bustled over the line, so we'll see a throw in. McDermott, Kidney and Garton with three each to the Bay's. Roberts has got four goals for the uh, Eagles, but he probably should have had uh, six there's a high one on Pilmore, and he'll take a free kick. 
thought Stephen Simler may have been off-sighted there, but uh, he managed to pick that one out. And Pilmore shoots it up high. Carey's there from behind. He can't mark it. I think John Roberts took it, Peter. John Roberts it was. Thank you, Robert. I'm looking uh, through a very thick pane of glass at this stage, and I've, uh, I've got three sets of figures. I've got to pick the one in the middle. John Roberts is about 35 metres out. This is his eighth kick. And he kicked it very nicely indeed for his fifth goal. For the great uh, displeasure of the Glenelg supporters. Torrens 11-12, Glenelg 14-8. I would agree with you. I thought Peter Carey was going to look as though he was going to have a piece of that ball, but somehow or other, I think John Roberts might have juggled it. Only people getting the advantage of a replay be able to tell whether John Roberts marked it or not. The umpire had to make his decision instantly, but a very good kick by John Roberts and a very important goal for Glenelg. For the Eagles, in fact. Up goes Carey, couldn't left hand it. Smith fought well for that ball, Justin Smith, and he managed to get it out too. Here's a chance again for the Eagles. Another score would be to their great delight. Foot, Taylor. He's a man with an enormous amount of pace. That ball is swinging back in boomerang fashion, but only a point. Torrens 11-13, Glenelg 14-8. Duty to bring the ball back in. Straight down the centre he goes. Kevin Hill's there, up he goes. Making two on one, it's left Gibbs on the ground. Circles back. His 15th kick goes to centre half forward. Garton's underneath it. Marshall takes it off hands. Comes out towards the half forward flank. McDermott making position. She was down and up just as quickly. Hank saves the day. Little scrubby kick forward. Gives it to Colsey. Coming through now, Joe Hanson. He's been caught a couple of times, Barrett. She does play Salisbury. Very fine play. Just kept coming at Barrett, and Barrett's got a bit of pace too. He thought he could get clear. Salisbury said, no, you don't. And it's handy to see a forward player for your side working that hard in his defence. Carey just lays it back to Weston. See, that was well done by Weston. Let Carey go for the knock on his own and took the ball from him. Foot, Taylor, Seabone's got him. Nice tackle. Roberts. Good movement now by West Torrens. Three-quarter time, Siren. John Roberts. I think he's been in this situation before today, Peter. At the end of the second quarter, the siren went. He just missed. This one, very important. It'd be lovely to go in seven points behind. He's given it a chance. But not enough. It's curved too much for him. He kicks the minor score. So West Torrens at three-quarter time are 11-14, 80 points. Trailing Glenelg, 14-8, 92 on seven's big lead just before three-quarter time to reduce it, but he can only kick a minor score. Adam Garton takes possession. He can't get it forward. Now an opportunity for Ron Taylor. He's come back onto the ground after a stint on the reserves bench. He's certainly come back with a lot more life. Wild here at Wayne Springer. He can't get rid of it. Now an opportunity through West Torrens as David Foot kicks high into the air. And who's there? Ross Gibbs. The old custodian of the back pocket. Maynard. To Salisbury. Salisbury shifted up into attack in, at half time by Coach Corns. Marshall. It's pretty sharp today, David Marshall. It's a good kick too as he goes to full forward. Garton's up there, he's got the height. Picked up and kicked away there by somebody I can't pick out. Oh, Enright. Very nice mark. Gee, Salisbury's done a good job in that forward line. He plates it like a man in defence. A desperate man. A man who doesn't want to let anything get away. Some forwards not inclined to do that. Not particularly concerned. They like players to kick it to them nice and easily. Not Scott Salisbury. His kick's a very good one too. It's right into the square. Ooh, a very high fly there by Garton. Off hand. And, and a, a, free, a kick to Walsh. Walsh has scored his second. The little 15-8. Torrens 11-14. On seven's big lead. That's been a good move of Graham Corns uh, whilst to full forward after half time because uh, he, uh, he had a chance very soon after going there with a set kick, missed it. But he likes to snap those goals and on that occasion off hands was very slick indeed onto that right boot. And that gives Glenelg a real breather because they're 18 points in front now. 15-8 to 11-14 on 7's big lead. 
Henwood and Wilson in the ruck. Wilson for West Torrance. He's played from centre half back and he's gone to the ruck. John Cunningham has come from centre half back and into the ruck as well. And they've changed off the interchange bench a couple of times during the day. David Kernahan now with an opportunity. He gives it to Alan Stringer. Stringer to Marshall. Marshall to half forward. Straight at the goal front. Players dropping back on the ball. The Conham who can't take the mark and he the line for Salisbury. But Scott Salisbury can't get to the ball before it's just dribbled over the line. So Glenelg, they're certainly doing it very well at the moment. They're 15-10, Torrens are 11-14 on Sevens Big League. I think Scott Salisbury likes uh, a bit of a run up forward. McIndoe for the Eagles, looking for Downey. Punching away was Wayne Stringer. That's a good thump too. It's worth a kick. Kidney takes it over the line. 11-14 to 15-9, the Bay's leading. Both sides have won the one game thus far this season, and at this stage, the Bays would be favoured to take this one out, but one never knows. The Garten kick, very close to the line. Stayed in, in fact, for David Foot to hook it back. Well, it's ricocheted off. Garten picks it up with the left boot and puts it straight through the middle. Well, four goals, Adam Garten. A big game from centre-half forward, and do you reckon he's not happy about that? 16-9 the Bays, the, the Eagles 11-14. Well, Adam Garten is a great forward, isn't he? He's moved into full forward now. Uh, when he gets into the, the ball, comes into attack, he runs into that full forward area. He doesn't start there, but he loves to get in there. I think he likes to look at those goals. And when he gets his hands on it, he's got a bit of mobility. His ability then to get around and kick that left foot goal, tremendous. 25 points the difference. Can the Eagles come back? Would Paul Weston consider again putting himself on the ball? done a pretty good job, particularly in the first half at centre-half forward. But the game slipping away from him now. It's McDermott's free kick. Over the shoulder was the decision. Garten again, too strong. He really is a giant of a man, and he's so mobile to go with it. He's taken seven big marks, and he fancies himself as a long kick too. Gives that a giant thump right into the forward area. Economer, who was, that uh, punched it over the top for another point. 16-10 the day, the Eagles 11-14. Peter McIndoe will bring the ball back into play. West Torrens looking for some teamwork, some possession. A bit of team football that they showed in the first half, first quarter in particular. Some great running play, something that they have not recaptured. It comes to the member stand side of the ground. Page from the back, Stringer from the front. It's Wayne Stringer who takes the mark. He goes high. Well, he might too. A bit of confidence, a bit of height up there for little Gavin Walsh in the front spot. Ball just knocked out quickly to Tom Hank. Conor who can't take it. Players fighting and scrambling for the ball. Finally, it's picked up just after the whistle is gone. Craig Woodland would have liked that. To walk up to the gold mouth and say thank you very much. Umpire will bounce. Garten coming in. Lays it back. Nice knock too to Kidney. Kidney gives it back to Garden. Garden has another snap. The wind seems to be blowing still towards that northern end because that kick certainly faded in with the breeze. 16-11 to Glenelg, 11-14 to West Torrens. Adam Garden is dominating that forward area for the Bays. He's, he's rucking, he's snapping, he's kicking long ones, he's marking, he's doing everything. And I think he's loving it. I think he's copped a bit of flack uh, because of his slight drop away in form in the earlier part of this year, but uh, he's certainly back with a vengeance there. He's keen, he's in front of the pack there. Laid it down for Maynard, but that was a good smother by Johansson, so we'll see another throw in. Maynard hasn't been his usual nippy self, but he has come back after injury, and uh, he'd be pretty happy to get through the game. We'll see another bounce down now. The Bays, since half-time, have played very well. They were only 8-4 then. And since half-time, they've slammed on 8-7. It's been a good performance. A free kick now to Maynard, and uh, to Kidney, should I say. It's usually Kidney or Maynard. Kidney's at left half-forward. Puts the ball high, that's swinging back. Garten is there, as you might expect, but Foot takes it off-hand off -hand very sweetly. Puts it to the outer side of the ground. They got back on Taylor. Donovan's pretty quick. Alan Stringer. Colsey. Here's it taken off him by Donovan. Back it goes. Hank 
couldn't mark the ball. Cunningham got it out to Johansson. He threw it away. Hank again thought about pouncing on it. He's in trouble now, though. Chance for coughing. Gets around onto that dangerous left boot. The kick was smothered. Pillboard of foot. Conover, in fact, it was. And through Smith, the Eagles will get out of trouble. Only temporarily, though, because Max Cruz is on centre wing to take the mark. He certainly shadowed Paul West and done a pretty good job. That kick's not too flash. Well done by Gibbs, though. As he cuts back and saves the day. Seabone, Maynard. A little bit better screw pump. Got a bit of a wobble in it, though. Gets into the full forward area. Now West Torrance with a chance to relieve through Tom Hank. Hank kicks it around his body towards Joe Hanson. He goes straight past the ball. Salisbury back in, just smashing the ball wildly forward. Oh, and the corner moves caught with the ball. And it's knocked out of his hands and out of bounds. And it'll be a throw-in on the half-forward flank for Glenelg. Cunningham in front position. Pushed underneath the ball by Garth, and it seemed. The umpire says no. Coffey setting himself, spoiled away from him. Woodland's coming across. Hank can't get him. He just gives a sh short handball to Alan Stringer. Throws it onto his boot. Very difficult mark for Coffey. Flies out of his hands. Back there with the ball. Like a pick, he scored cold. So West Torrance in all sorts of strife at the moment. They can't seem to get their hands on anything. I think it was Justin Smith back there in defence. That's his horror pocket. He made a couple of mistakes early in, earlier in the match there. He'd love to forget a few of those. So Stephen Copping, 35 metres out, very acute angle. He's got the wind blowing across. It'll curve it in for him. And that's exactly what he does. His second goal is a superb one. 17 goals, 11 for nil. 11-14 to Torrens on seven's big lead. Well, the Bays had quite a few chances in that, uh, that particular exchange. And... Uh, when Justin Smith got hold of the ball, he got caught running backwards. Stephen Copping ran straight at the body. The umpire said, that's enough, that's holding the ball. It was a great kick, Copping. Two goals to that player. 17-11 to 11-14, the Bays leading. Wayne Henwood in ruck. Very mobile player. He's had a good up. He goes and just bangs it forward to no one in particular. Lindsay it is who takes it away. He kicks it deep. Ross Gibbs. Gibbs on the left foot to Marshall. David Marshall at half back. Decides to just go up the wing towards Maynard, coming out Salisbury. Salisbury in front, spawned away from him and out of bounds. Right in front of the member stand in the interchange gate. The game has certainly been all gone ill since quarter time. Their accuracy of kicking has been too good in the second quarter, even though Torrance played well. Wayne Stringer to full forward. Players setting out of Woodlands is underneath the ball. He can't take it. Smith flies over the top of McDermott. He gives it away to Walsh. Walsh to Alan Stringer. He's got an opportunity to kick a goal. He goes backwards towards Woodlands. Ball is spoiled away from him. Colsey coming through quickly. Joe Hanson takes though. And now an opportunity for Wilson. He drops it. Pays comes in and throws himself on top. Very hectic play. Nice take by Lindsay. And West Torrens clearing through Joe Hanson. Centre wing. Wayne Henwood made a few mistakes but he's also done a lot of hard work for the Bays as Wayne Henwood pack of players there no mark offhand Wayne uh, Alan Stringer floats one right in towards goal there Economu can't mark the ball it was Walsh who left it behind and McIndoe decides to step over the line I must say I can't blame him with Elk 17-12 now to the Eagles 11-14 McIndoe from full back it's a lead from Downey Kernahan from behind. Gee, that was a magnificent pickup by David Kernahan, but he's carried the ball over the line. Gee, he was at pace then. Big tall lad too. Just bent down by his ankles and picked that ball up like a seagull. Picking up a piece of bread. Garten from behind. Cunningham from behind. It's Garten who lays it back only to Lindsay though. Lindsay to centre wing. West Torrens is just sort of fiddling. Weston finally gets his hands on the ball. It's a well-placed kick into some space. It certainly gives Ron Taylor the opportunity. Back he comes. Weston's run on for him, and he uses him now. So Paul Weston's got an opportunity. He could just about kick this. The ball carrying high in the air. Chris Doothy just punches it over the line and saves the day. John Roberts not happy. He reckons that Doothy had one hand on his back. 
So West Orange just scoring one more point. They're 11 15. Glenelg 17 12 on Sevens Big League. Well, Duty knew what he was doing then, and uh, technically he may have interfered with Roberts, but the umpire didn't consider it sufficient. Wayne Stringer furthers it to Donovan. He's at right half back flank. The Bay's comfortably in the lead at this point. Now McDermott. He's been a, a big kick winner for the Bay's. Goes up to centre half forward. Economy couldn't mark the ball. It's thrown out now. Maynard fighting for it. Diving all over the place. And umpire Semler will bounce it. 17-12 to 11-15. The big success story today for the Bays has been Garton at centre half forward. He's really dominated that position and uh, has given the Bays every chance to win this one. He's done a lot of ruck work too. Swinging out of the pack was Maynard. Hooks around the body. McIndoe doesn't chance the mark and he pushes to the line. Cropping I don't think is 100% fit. It was Gavin Walsh who was moved to the full forward spot at the beginning of the third quarter and he also has been useful Garten got another kick away grubbing it along the ground I think that was Kidney who kicked it high in the air the chance for the Bays a kick off the ground the player is Woodlands and he really is a specialist half forward and that's his second goal Craig Woodlands the Bays 18-12 Torres 11-15 you're watching the big game here from Football Park on 7th Big Lane it was a very good call by Woodlands, certainly a bit of scrambling in there, but he's very quick, good reflex, and Craig Woodlands just banged his boot onto that ball. When he saw, saw the slight opportunity, the opening there, he let it go. Henwood, Cunningham, off-hands Kidney, Marshall, the crumbs, the long handball to Maynard, sweeping it further to Donovan. Woodlands again, but uh, he drops the ball, and that allows Hank to come in. Colsey wants it. A Hank kick smothered by Donovan. Sims gives it back to Hank. Colsey, Marshall, the big leap. He's going to be paid the mark. Colsey wants to play on, but it's a Marshall mark. 13 kicks, Marshall. Good mark, Johansson. Downey, still a lot of trouble, and he was flat-footed when he received that. And fancy being flat-footed when this man's around, because... He tackles like a bear. Kicks like a bear too. Quick kick away, Johansson. Pays under the ball. A lot of courage. Kernahan's covering a lot of territory. Kicks it out to Hemwood. Pays again. And Salisbury back on it to Cruz. He screws it up to centre half forward. Stringer in front. Good mark. Leap from a standing position then. I didn't have a run at all at that. Carey now will replace Henwood. Alan Stringer from centre half forward. 12th kick. He's just going to make it, I think. Yes, he has. His first goal. So Glenelg advanced to 19 12 now to Tyrone's 11 15. Well, Alan Stringer certainly played a much better second half. He was shifted onto the centre wing, and he's played very, very good footy on that position. He's worked up into the half-forward line. Of course, he started his football as a centre-half forward, and he knew what to do with that ball when he got it. That was a great kick by him as he's kicked the 19th goal. Up goes Peter Carey. Backhands at the centre-half forward. Colsey comes in, boots the Eagles out of trouble. Weston's at centre-half forward, and he plays on. Shoots the long handball out, Justin Smith, natural left foot, should be able to do something with it. Floats, floated off line. A point only. 11-16 the Eagles, the Tigers 19-12. Ross Gibbs to kick in again. He's done it several times today, 16 in fact, just about the lot I'd say. Doothy's kicked in a couple. Donovan's not able to mark it, Carey gives it away quickly. Well, the ball just flung out by Cruz to McDermott. Wayne Stringer now, out to the centre wing, giving Alan Stringer the opportunity. Running on quickly is David Marshall. Marshall goes to full forward where Garten, uh, Walsh, should I say, well out in front. Dummies, but drops the ball in the process. And here's Garten. He thinks it's Christmas dinner. He's just kicked another one. So Adam Garten with five goals. That was another one on his left foot from a snap. Just picked it up like a rover. How do you like it? 20 goals, 12 now, Glenelg. Torrens, 
is Adam Garten really has been the dominant forward player in this game. John Roberts has also booted five, but Garten has done a lot of work in ruck. He's uh, run all over that forward line. He's the dominant, the key figure in the forward line for the Bays, and they've, they've looked for him. Why shouldn't they? He's finished his job, his work off beautifully. David Grenvold coming on. Peter Maynard going off as Peter Carey lays it down. Bruce Lindsay coming through quickly. Just kicks it forward. David Foote has it scored away from him by Ross Gibbs. Now an opportunity for Barrett. He's got a bit of pace too. But Seabone's right with him. Salisbury coming in. Salisbury watching the ball. Barrett decided to jump in the air. Players just fall aside. Picked up by Seabone. Joe Hanson. A wobbly old handball. Craig Woodlands. He's usually a pretty good kick. It's not going to kick. He's going to handball. Garton. He'll just brush the player aside. No way. He's going to take it himself. And just punches forward. But on this occasion, he's inaccurate. 20 goals, 13 now, Glenelg. Torrens 11-16 on Sevens Big League. He's a strong man, Adam Garton. He really is. He just busted his way through those players there. And uh, the Eagles make another change. Pilmore to replace Sims. As McIndoe prepares to kick off. It has been vintage football from the Bays from midway through that second quarter. Wilson onto the ball late. There's a push in the back which will go against the Bays. And it's the other Eagle player there. Just getting up now. Smith. He will take the free kick. Against McDermott. Smith's last left footer was a floater. So was that. Cunningham was in a spot of bother. It was Garton who recovered to Kidney. The lead is on from Copping. Uh, from uh, Walsh. Left foot. Walsh. Like a soccer player. Through the centre. Three goals, Walsh. And the Bays now 21-13 to the Eagles 11-16. Well, good recovery by Gavin Walsh. But West Torrens, they can't get anything going. It's amazing how their skills have dropped off completely. Their, their endeavour in the first quarter, their run was fantastic. They maintained it in the second, their run. But what happened to them then, of course, was they lost their skills, left them in the second quarter. And now in the second half, we've seen the skills of Glenelg take over. And also the run of West Torrens has gone completely, probably because of the fall in their skill level. 13 goals to three in this second half so far. Glenelg totally dominant. It's Bruce Lindley, Lindsay's free kick. Alan Stringer grabbed hold of him when he didn't have it. Foot leads to the outer side pocket. Pays, I think, may get there first. Had a good first half, Pays, but like a lot of Torrance players, they have dropped away. Crews up late. Carey and Weston fight for it. The throw, according to the umpire, as Carey as uh, Weston pushed the ball out. That's a hard one. Carey. Went along the ground all the way too, Peter. He, he didn't flick it into the air, did he? He appeared to. Cruise to Grenvold. Donovan, the runner. The leading player up there is uh, Kidney. He takes it over the line. There's a great performance for the Bays, and uh, one can't give that man, Adam Garten, enough praise, uh, Robert. It was amazing that he just couldn't seem to find a place in the side earlier in the year, but he's certainly good enough. Yes, it's amazing. I think when loss of form, some players lose their positions, other players are stuck with. And it just seems that Adam Garten's one of those players, if things go badly for him for a while, he, they put him on the bench. Maybe that's the way to stimulate him a little. But by gee, what a great final series he had last year. And then today, when the Tigers have got their backs to the wall after two successive losses, Big Garten's been in there fighting. Here he is again. Over to Woodlands. Well done. Woodlands has tackled well by Tom Hank and pulls him offline. The ball going out of bounds on the full. So Tom Hank will have the kick in. The umpire telling Tom Hank that he has to take it. Tom Hank wants Peter McIndoe to take it. The umpire won't have a bar of that. So Tom Hank. On the last line. Down the centre. Straight to Max. No, I was going to say Max Cruz if you don't mind. Try. Well, he had to do that. Um, the only two players that could have marked that ball were Peter Carey and Adam Garton, so he had to swing it to the centre, and of course that's, what, that's yeah. what's happened. He's found Chris McDermott. He's had a good game since half-time. He certainly is a Tiger in the true sense of the word. A, it's his 19th kick, and he's had a big second half. Good, good kick too. Peter, that's carrying. I think it's got the distance. It has certainly got the distance. Four goals now to Chris McDermott. 
22 goals, 13 to Glenelg, 11, 16 to West Torrens. You're watching on Seven's Big League. Yes, I think Chris McDermott, along with Adam Garten, have been Glenelg's best players. They've had many, many other uh, good players, of course. You look at Gibbs, Marshall. Um, Salisbury's been a good player for them, but McDermott in particular, I think he's been a four-quarter player, and they're the ones you really want. P Peter Carey's back on the ball. Someone's run over the line there. Thought it was Paul Weston or who. He got in there fairly quickly, so Glenelg get a free. And that free kick will be taken by Peter Carey. Carey played the first half, started on the ground. In the second half, he started both quarters on the interchange bench and has come on as the interchange ruckman. And he's the man that's really had the game under control. Adam Garten gives it away to Marshall. The ball now moved quickly from Enright to Colsey. Colsey into the half-forward line where Weston's dropped back very quickly. He's taken possession on half-forward. He knows he's only got to beat Carey, but Carey's done it well. Beautifully done, Peter Carey. Instead of running at him, we saw it happen earlier by a West Torrens player. And then a West Torrens player stalked Ross Gibbs. Barry Pilmore it was on that instance. And now Peter Carey just stalking. Instead of running at the player, and he's been able to trap it off the boot. Much to the Glenelg fans' delight. Now they're at battle again. Carey and, and uh, Weston. And Carey just banged it out of bounds. So another start, repeat performance. Be Weston again against Peter Carey. Weston's done all the ruck work in the forward line. He's played at centre half forward all day. Making front position this time, but Carey's too tall. Just knocks it as far as Kevin Hill. That's a very good kick by Hill as it goes in the square. Roberts is underneath it. He can't complete the mark. Gibbs is there to help Duthie. They're two on one. Duthie just tripping it out from the hands of Roberts. Then the handball forward to Gibbs as Gibbs backs him up and away goes the milk again. A lovely kick forward. David Marshall gives it away quickly, but Stringer's run past. Colsey, Joe Hanson's caught. The umpire says holding the ball. How, I don't know, but must have been. Well, they do it quick these, these days, Robert. Times have changed. Wayne Stringer's got it now. Ten kicks to Wayne Stringer. He aims for Coppy. Comes in late. It was Cunningham in front who couldn't mark the ball. He recovered and got back on it quickly. Downey was in there and also McDermott but we'll see another bounce down left half forward for the uh, flank for the Bays and they lead presently by 63 points a massive uh, lead at this point Salisbury as tough as you like busts his way through the pack Economy slams it to the line and we'll see a throw in no doubt we'll see Adam Garten come into this fray the big man lumbers in and he will challenge Wilson for the ball Wilson's got his hands in front. Good kick away sees Johansson. Boot it towards Pays. Now David Kernahan wheels around. Hooks it back towards centre half forward. And there he is again. Chris McDermott. Thinks about uh, Alan Stringer. But I think he may be confident enough to go for this. Weston is right behind him. <laughs> He's saying plenty. But he kicked Chris McDermott. Lovely looking kick. Torrance play there tries to move the post. Guys a bit confused. This finger, that finger, but finally a point. Glenelg 22 14, the Eagles 11 16. McIndoe kicks to David Foote. Foote's got Colsey on the wing. He goes to him, McDermott coming across quickly. Colsey takes the mark. Drops the ball as he falls, and then away he goes again. Foote's backed up his own play. He's coming through the centre. Another good kick. Weston's there, ball dropping short. It's a stalemate. Weston was going to knock that out. He tried to leave it for Kevin Hill. But he wasn't able to. The defence was too tight. Cunningham in front of Carey. Carey lays it back. Lindsay's a great one for snaring the opposition knock. He's done it on several occasions this afternoon. Done it very well indeed. He goes forward. Now Barrett with an opportunity. He had a great start to the game. And he kicked that one with Gibbs stalking him and it's gone right across the goal. Gibbs doing that well. He was going to handle it then Gibbs went with the handle then Gibbs came back with him. Been some very good defensive work here this afternoon by both sides. Chris Duthie, he'll take the kick in. Ball going right across the goal face then. Looking for big Peter Carey. He'll put one hand on it, just leaves it for Kernahan. 
he knocks it out to Salisbury. Salisbury goes backwards to Gibbs. Gibbs always seems to be somewhere around the place when there's a ball left. And this time it's a wobbly punt forward in the McDermott direction. McDermott and Colsey. Colsey tapped it in front, did that very well. Showing a bit of pace now. The kick's a wobbler. Kidney. Wayne Stringer. Alan Stringer next. He's on centre wing. Marshall's the runner. Gartman will be next. For sure, because Marshall rarely misses the body. Gartman, can he kick another goal? Runs in. Lays it on the boot. But he's just off line with that one. So Glenelg advance now to 22-14 to the Eagles 11-16 on seventh big league. Yeah, but Garton looks a very balanced player too when he runs like that. He looks like a real footballer. Like some people wobble a bit. We all look different, but he looks like an absolute champ. His movement at that goal was oh so confident. The kick was just sent away very well, but he didn't get his line right. Downing. Done a lot of good things, particularly early. Lindsay's played well all day. He's a very good player for West Orange, Bruce Lindsay. She's Kevin Hill doing the lead to the outer side, both Hill and Weston. Hill gets there first. Weston runs on. Ball goes that direction. Colsey trying to make ground down the wing. Salisbury backing up well too. Well done, Scott Salisbury. If there was any doubt about the play, he was going to get it. He gives it back straight away. Woodlands now with an opportunity. Goes in long and strong. Walsh setting himself. It's too far for him though, the full forward. And it's been knocked out of bounds. Right alongside the behind post. Must be nearly time at the, with 22 goals, 15 to Glenelg. 11-16 to Torrens. It'll be three or four minutes into the time on period of this last quarter. Garten from behind. Just lays it back to Walsh. Smothered by Lindsay. He's been a very good player. Long kick out of defence. Pays up in the air. Good high for him. Right taps it forward. Big Peter Carey. He's going to have a go, but he's been caught. He was going to go through there. Salisbury. He's caught. Ball falls in right. Now Max Cruz. Cruz couldn't pick it up on that occasion, but he managed to, to stay over top of the ball, but uh, the umpire will bounce. 22-15 the Bays, the Eagles 11-16. Peter Curie will eat that, smacks it back towards Kernahan. David Foot now for the Eagles, he's also caught, good tackle, Wayne Stringer through very strong. Now Marshall shoots it wide to David Kernahan, that's a high ball right into the teeth of goal and he's just off line with it a point only well 22 16 to the eagles 11 16. peter mackenday from full back doesn't know what to do i think that's been symptomatic of the west torrent side for the last three quarters of the game they haven't been quite sure what they're all about kidney gets a wild one to grenville He's tackled, the ball's underneath him, he can't get rid of it, it's following him. Hard as he tried to knock it out, Pays brought it back. Andrew Pays on centre wing, good flyer for the ball. Some exciting things early. Glenelg had been on top across the centre. Garten, the man who's been in charge of that forward line all day. Foot, Tom Hank. Here ball finds Pays, settles himself and goes in high. Donovan in front, knocked away by Weston. Barrett now, he's got a bit of pace, but he can't take it in Weston again. Gets the ball forward, he's going to get a free kick for a tackle, which is too low. A trip, in fact. Weston pays, gets out of it very easily, then runs into his coach, uses the left boot. John Roberts in front, he was always going to mark that ball. And he just had that uh, yard in front of Duthie. And that's his eighth big mark. Yeah, John Roberts has kicked five. This is his tenth kick. A few points too. Three in fact. That will not make the distance. The siren is gone. The big 11-goal victory to the Bay. 22-16 to Torres 11-16.